Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We are live and we are well. Amen and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to have a great, great time tonight. And uh, I want you to really be encouraged with this broadcast because we are going to bring up powerful pointers in how you can master the enemy's attacks. This is going to be very, very powerful. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I know the enemy is not happy uh, with uh, this kind of broadcast because this broadcast is going to make a difference in your life. Uh, there's no time wasting here. It is absolutely going to impact your life. The keys to, uh, to God's wisdom is so vital when we face uh, different things in life. And unless we have the wisdom of God and we know the keys of God in this situation, how to apply yourself what to do, what not to do, how to interpret when something goes wrong. Amen. It is so important. Uh, so uh, I want you to get ready. And I'm just waiting for some more people to join because we don't want anyone to miss out on this wonderful opportunity. Hallelujah. So let's pray and let's commit this broadcast to the Lord. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we commit this broadcast to you, and we ask you, Father, that your name will be exalted in this broadcast, and that people will benefit, and people will be encouraged, Lord, as they watch this broadcast. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And everyone said, Amen and amen. I'm just double checking if this is out there. If somebody can just comment and say, yep, all is good. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it looks good. It looks good. Looks like we are on the air and everything is good. Okay, great. All right, let's get right into it. And by the way, if this is your first time that you with a Crossroads Church family group, uh, then we welcome you. We are the body of Christ. You and I belong to each other. We are part of the same family of God. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Eight keys. Are you ready? Eight powerful keys. And we're going to start off with key number one. All right. The eight keys that unlock victory when you are under an attack. So are you ready for the first key? There it comes. Key number one. An attack, when you experience an attack, it basically reveals that you, uh, that the enemy believes in your future. Oh, we've got some Facebook folk. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. When you're under an attack, it reveals that uh, the enemy fully believes that you are capable of obtaining your goal. And let me just say this to you, okay? The enemy, when he attacks you, that means he believes in your future more than sometimes the individual believes. The enemy only attacks what is a threat to his kingdoms of darkness. And when he attacks you, you must quote the scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Amen. You've got to quote that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. That is very, very important. Okay. Now, the next thing. Uh that when you are under an attack, do not say, woe is me. 
It's not because that you have necessarily done anything wrong. And I want you to be encouraged with that. So remember, the first key, when you are under an attack, remind yourself you are a threat to the powers of darkness and the enemy believes in your future. That is why you are under an attack. Number two, there are eight keys. The second key, Satan only, the enemy will only attack at the birth of something. Remember when Jesus was born? Then Herod issued a decree. All little boys under the age of two, two and younger must be killed off. So when God's perfect vision came into this world, God's perfect vision was under an attack. That is right. And we must know these uh, uh, keys of uh, a wisdom that will unlock victory in every attack that we face. Because when you know these keys, and this is only the second key that we're busy with, then that will boost you, encourage you, that you're on the right track, okay? Now, as Satan only attacks the birth of something significant, of significance. Jesus was of significance, and he is significant, amen? And when the enemy can attack uh, uh, the birth of something right in the beginning, then he can cause that vision or that potential to become aborted. The enemy has a spiritual abortion clinic. And the way the enemy attacks is he begins to make you feel bad, make you feel disappointed, discouraged, make you feel, uh, you know, we have an expression, make you feel lousy. Is there such a word over here? I hope. It makes you just feel rotten. So, let's look, for instance, it may be the birth in the beginning stages of something that is going to become a champion of God. God bless everyone on Facebook. I'm so glad that you are watching. Thank you because this shows how much you want to be a champion for God. Hallelujah. And these principles, you can go and share it with other people. Now remember when Moses uh, was born, okay, Pharaoh issued a decree. Again, all young Hebrew boys to be killed off. Why? Because Moses was God's first deliverer to bring the Israelites out of Egyptian bondage. And so the enemy wanted to kill off God's purpose of the, during a birth uh, of Mo Moses. And remember, Moses was cast onto the river. That's right. Uh, in a little uh, basket, like a little, uh, it's a small type of junior uh, ark of the covenant, but we will not go there. All right, so th those are the two pointers. The first one, what did we say? When the enemy comes against you, it's because the enemy believes in your assignment and believes in your future. And you need to rise up and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. The second uh, point we made, when the enemy comes against you, okay, it's because when he can attack a vision in its beginning stages and derail it, that is part of the spiritual abortion clinic of the devil's tactics. Amen. All right, number three, Satan, the enemy, uses those closest to you 
as a gateway into your heart to distort you, your focus, to uh, cause you to become so discouraged and, and, and so uh, bent out of shape. And so let me just say this to you, that Jacob, who was a prince of God, the enemy came against Jacob through his own household. His own sons took the younger son Joseph and put him in a pit, sold him to Ishmaelites, and then took his uh, uh, robe, coat of many colors, dipped it in animal blood, and took it to the daddy, to Jacob, and said, bad news, bad news. A wild animal has killed Joseph. So the, the enemy can actually be at work through your own household members. If the enemy cannot get to you, he will attack one of your household members to distract you. Jesus, I'm reading here from the word, okay, in Matthew 10, uh, 36, Jesus himself said that, uh, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Wow. Wow. That is so potent. When the enemy cannot get to you, he will attack one of your own household people. Those things that are close to your heart, that's close to you, the enemy would want to attack that to discourage you. So be alert to that, okay? Point number four. Key number four. All right? And these are the eight keys of unlocking victory in a battle. Know the word of God and knowing scriptures is the best defense against the enemy's tactics. Okay? Remember in Matthew chapter 4, the enemy came against Jesus and said, If you are the Son of God, why don't you turn these stones into bread? Jesus knew. He was the Son of God, because the Father said just in the previous verses, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. And so, Jesus also understood that turning the stone into bread is not going to bring eternal life. And then he said, It is written, Man shall not, what? Live on bread alone but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Almighty, oh hallelujah. That means we live off a proceeding word, another preceding word. Say that with me. I live off a ongoing, a proceeding word, okay, and not a preceding word. It is important. And as you quote, the word of God, the enemy has got no option. He has to leave because the enemy cannot handle the word of God. The Bible says there in the Revelation, by the word, uh, by, their, um, by the word of their testimony and the blood of the lamb, they overcame the word of their testimony. When you speak the word, it is also a testimony unto God that you believe in God by quoting his word. And the devil hates the word. Amen. So remember, quote the word of God. Amen. So now we are, there we go. We are on uh, key number five. There are eight keys. Key number five. I'm trying just to hit the pointers so that I do not waste anybody's time. 
Number five, angels. I want you to understand angels are real. Angels minister to the heirs of salvation. If you are an heir of salvation, you qualify to have access that angels will minister to you. Mostly angels, now watch this, are continually ready to minister to you at the conclusion of a crisis. At the conclusion of a crisis. And that I find in Matthew 4, verse 11. After Jesus has gone through the temptations of the devil, the Bible says, and Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan. Is that right? Of course. And Satan left him until a later opportune time. But when Satan left Jesus, the Bible says in Matthew 4, 11, Behold, angels came, I'm just reading here, and ministered unto him. At the conclusion of a serious attack, God is releasing his angels to come and minister to you. Let me give you one other example. Remember, Elijah was on Mount Carmel and he uh, challenged the Baal false worshippers, the false prophets. And all those prophets that ate at Jezebel's table, uh, a manipulating, controlling, idolatrous food of intoxication by deception or through deception. And Elijah went to confront them. Remember, he says, now here's a bull. You call on the name of your God. And if your God is the God of fire, he will consume this bull. And we will worship your God. Because there was a wavering opinion, a wavering opinion during that time. Now watch this. And that did not happen. I'm just cutting through the chase. And Elijah repaired the altar, poured water onto it. And called on the God who answers by fire. And fire came down from heaven, consumed the bull that was cut in her half. And at that moment, Elijah brought a great victory to the kingdom of God. Apologies, there was a hair. And they killed off all those false prophets. Watch now. Are you ready? But chapter 19, the very next chapter in Elijah's life, the very next chapter, Elijah is under a serious threat. He's under a serious threat. Jezebel is mad. And she... Uh, threatened and issued a decree by tomorrow this time you will be dead watch now a great victory then a great attack Elijah goes I wonder if he went on a hunger strike with a suicidal mentality and he just lied down in the field hoping to die after a crisis, after a huge battle, God commands his angels concerning you. Oh, that is wonderful. And angels came and ministered. This angel came and ministered to Elijah. He says, get up, eat something. Brought him cake and bread. And said, the journey is still long. God will command his angels concerning you. But we've got to know when you go through stressful situations, a serious attack, when you feel demoralized, when you feel like what 
am I doing in this position? What am I doing in this, uh, 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 under these circumstances? It feels like you are just, like you just want to give up. Well, don't give up because God is right there. He's looking at you. He's watching over you. And God will not let you to be tempted beyond what you can endure. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So at the conclusion of every serious attack, God commands his angels concerning you. Amen. Hallelujah. Key number six. Continuously praise and worship God. Do not let praise and worship leave your lips because praise and worship demoralizes the enemy during a crisis. Praise and worship is so powerful when Paul and Silas were in a midnight crisis in prison. They started to sing praises unto their God. And suddenly there was a shaking, hallelujah, and the praises of heaven, uh, or the praises of Paul and Silas caused the presence of heaven to find them. Praise God until his presence finds you. Praise God until his presence finds you. And when his presence found them, God's presence shook the chains of injustice off from them. And the prisoners and doors opened up and shook the foundations of the demonic attack. And Paul and Silas were released. Chains of injustice came off them. Hallelujah. We're almost through with tonight's teaching. But I hope you are making notes. Now, continuous praise and worship, okay? Because the presence of God is far stronger than the presence of the devil. I'm just looking in Psalms, where's it? 34 verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Psalms 34 verse 1. God's praises must constantly be on our lips. You offer him the fruit of your lips as praise. The enemy cannot handle the presence of God. But if the enemy can cause somebody to become discouraged and you think of the problem all the time and you think of, you know, the negativity of activity and you, uh, you that's when the presence of the devil's goods will manifest. But when you know these keys in how to unlock the victory in every, under every or in every attack, when you know how to apply these keys and you are alert because you are aware of these keys, you only get attacked when you're worth something. If you're not worth anything in this world, the enemy will never attack you. And then Remember, the enemy will always, that second key, always attack something that is in its birthing stage, even with Jesus. The enemy tried to kill off the, all the, uh, the perfect vision of God and all the uh, boys under the age of two, Herod's decree. Remember that, okay? And then also the enemy will use those that are closest to you as gateways into your heart, like the, brother, the sons of Jacob were killed off just about their own brother Joseph. Because remember, God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus quoted that. Jacob is a prince of God. And they tried to derail 
God's purpose, of Jacob's purpose in life, by attacking one of their own family members. And then that key number four, we said the word of God is the best defense against enemy tactics because the enemy cannot handle the word of God. There's only one thing the enemy has to obey. That's the word of God. The enemy only has to obey the word of God. Wow. And then we also said that at the end of a conclusion of a, a serious crisis, God commands his angels or an angel and they will come and minister to you like they did with Jesus. Amen. Then point number six, we said, continuous praise and worship will demoralize the enemy's tactics. Why? When you praise and you worship, you're activating the presence of God and the presence of heaven then finds the presence of God being activated in the earth realm. And when God's presence connect with the presence of your worship, then... Uh, I tell you something, all heaven breaks loose and that's when the foundations of that prison got shaken up and chains came off prisoners and doors open up. Amen. Hallelujah. Number seven. And then there's one more and we close. Number seven. Are you ready? Your faith must work for you every uh, moment in life your faith must work for you remember without faith we cannot please God because God is the reward of those who diligently seek him right Hebrews I'm just reading here, Hebrews 11 6 now now faith what does faith say faith says God be for me who can be against me. What does faith say? Faith says, God is going to reward me. Faith says, I've been redeemed from the curse of the law of sickness, death, hell, poverty. Faith says that Jesus made a public, made a public spectacle out of Satan by triumphing over Satan by the power of the cross. Oh, if you've got a little cross... You touch that little cross around your neck. Or you put your mind on the cross of our Lord Jesus. And you say, Father, thank you. That Jesus conquered Satan by the power of the cross. See, faith has a voice. Faith believes God is bigger than the crisis or the attack. And faith says, I will be at peace no matter what. I will not allow my peace to be derailed. So faith is a God pleaser. Number eight, the last key before we close. And I trust you got something out of this broadcast. You've got to know these eight keys that unlocks or unlock the victory in every battle. You must know that the weapon of wisdom assures promotion. Wisdom. Jesus himself grew in wisdom. Luke 2, 52, and in stature. You've, we've got to grow in wisdom. You, we've got to take the Bible and make it practical and connect it with daily situations so that we can be victorious. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus himself said, if we suffer with him, we will also reign with him. I'm reading from, yeah, from the Bible, uh, scripture. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. During a time of crisis, that, do not. That's what the enemy wants us to do. And I'm saying, do not deny. 
that God is still alive. Do not deny that God is still for you. Do not deny the fact that God is in you. Do not deny the fact that God is still caring for you. Because the presence of an attack is not the absence of the presence of God. Amen? For wisdom is a defense against the tactics of the enemy. Okay? In Ecclesiastes, I'm just looking here, uh, Ecclesiastes 7 verse 12. Um, let me just see here. The excellence of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to them that have it. Hallelujah. The excellence of knowledge gives wisdom. The excellence of knowledge, that is wisdom, gives life to them that have it. That's Ecclesiastes 7.12. 7.12. So let's conclude and say this. The Remember that an attack is merely proof that your enemy considers that your assignment is achievable. That's why he wants you to abort the seed. The seed is the seed of Christ, the seed of God's word. He wants you to try and abort that seed. Like there's a natural abortion clinic, there's also a spiritual abortion clinic. And the enemy wants that. He wants you to abort the seed. How? Worries chokes the word, which is the seed. Anxiety, stress, and all that stuff chokes the word of God. Okay? Remember, the enemy attacks when you get closer to your destiny. And that is why you must understand that even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was under a huge attack because he was close to his destiny and he fell down and his soul was overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death and Jesus wanted the cup to pass by. His soul was under an attack. But I praise God that Jesus conquered that attack by prayer. By prayer. After three times praying, he says, Come up, he says to his disciples, Arise, let us now go and face my betrayer. I pray that this broadcast blessed you. And please understand that knowing the keys that unlock victory in every attack is vital. Perhaps you should listen to this tape or this broadcast a few times. There's a lot of meat. And I, let me just pray. If you are going through any attack right now, put your hand to the screen. Put your hand to the screen. Touch my hand. Or hands if you can on your screen just touch it just touch it you know just touch it father every person whose hand is stretched out or touching my hands on that screen right now that is going through a serious attack I pray and I say thank you that no weapon formed against them shall not prevail. For when they are hard pressed, they will not be crushed. When they are persecuted, they will not be abandoned. When they are perplexed, they will not be in despair. I release the anointing of refreshing and the peace of God upon those whose hands are stretched out and even touching my hands on the screen. I pray in Jesus' name through this impartation 
that every curse of the enemy that was broken in Christ Jesus, that the influence of that power be broken off the people, that emotional healing comes forth, bad memories be healed, bad attitudes will fly away, and the attitude of Christ comes in. Any tormenting spirits of unforgiveness, you let go of God's people in Jesus' name. Anxiety, stress, fear, I bind your power over people's lives. And I release people from it. In Jesus' mighty name, receive it. And I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Go your way, rejoice, and enjoy the rest of your evening. And remember, if you're in the area, if you're in the area, right here you can see Crossroads Church, Mount Vernon. We're right here on North 42nd Street. Our entrance are marked with six flags. Come and visit us one Sunday. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And be his conqueror. Keep pushing through. You are not a, I've heard people say this, you are not a what? A victim. You are a victor. God bless you. Somebody says they made two pages of notes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's an honor to serve. God bless you. Go and give the devil a blue eye. <laughs> Until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. Bye now.